Hello everyone, welcome to Apu's Kitchen. Apu's Cafe is a cafe in Long Beach and you know within this corona pandemic everyone was trying to wonder what to do and I was so bored sitting at home under the lockdown I decided to come up with something very creative. So I call this to Corona or not to Corona as in the Shakespeare's great play to be or not to be. Today I'm going to make for you restaurant style palak paneer and as the series goes on I will show you different things that we make at our restaurant here in Long Beach but how to make it with store-bought items and not go through the prep entirely. So for today's feature of the palak paneer what I have here is from smart and final this packet a green giant packet key being creamed spinach that's what you want you don't want the regular spinach you want the creamed spinach and this they sell for two packets for two dollars and of course now at the time of corona it is two packets for four dollars as far as the paneer goes another item that is store bought I like to use the Nanak brand paneer which you can get at any of the Indian grocery stores or you can order them on Amazon I use one quarter slab of the Nanak paneer and this paneer runs you about $3.99 for this case and I use about one quarter of that. And lastly, I like to make fresh garam masala. Garam masala is a blend of different spices, seeds, coriander, anise, uh, cumin, uh, uh, bay leaves, etc and there are about eight or nine of these spices and what I do is I like to buy this packet I blend them or grind them in my own home. Every South Indian kitchen or North Indian kitchen has what is called an Anjala Patti or a box where you have different different things that is very easily accessible. Here in my box I have cumin, mustard seeds, chana dal, fenugreek, uh, dhania which is also coriander seeds, black pepper, this is Uluddar. Thank you. Even these onions that I have over here, these are called gill onions. These are already cut, ready to go. A packet which will last any, any family about a week is about $2.99. Again, at Smart and Final, you will find this in the aisle where all the uh, frozen section and things are kept. It's in the refrigerator section. So we have all of these different things. So what do I need to make my restaurant style palak paneer? I'm going to start with the key ingredients that I need. I need onion, about one cup. I need the paneer that I showed you a quarter slab chopped into small fine little pieces. One small round tomato, my garam masala, my dhana jeera powder, dhania means coriander leaves, dhania and jeera which is cumin. I powder that together and I get this. This is also store bought. You can get dhana jeera powder made fresh, turmeric, salt to taste and oil. The spinach, the creamed spinach, I thawed it and I just put it in the blender and I blended it into this consistency. And the idea here is I am reaching out to children, students who go to college, go to work and they come back in the evening and don't want to go and spend about $50 for a meal in the night. How do you make this in less than 30 minutes? That's what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to crank open, crank up the gas. I always like to use stainless steel or clay pots. I do not use any of the nonstick pans because of all the bad ingredients that are released from those pans. I like to stay life happy and keep it clean. So in a stainless steel pot, I'm going to take about three small spoons of oil. This is just regular vegetable oil. With the oil coming to a boil or just enough consistency of the heat, I start by putting a little cumin. I let the cumin roast for some time just to get a flavor on it and as soon as you can feel the smell you know the cumin is ready. 
you don't want the cumin to burn. You don't want the cumin to roast. You just want the oil to get the flavor of the cumin. Once that is done, I take my onions and I throw it right in there. And that's step number one. So for a stainless steel container, I like to use a stainless steel spatula. I saute the onions really well. So you can see it already kind of, that's the beauty of stainless steel. The cooking is so fast. I give it a nice stir. I get my tomatoes in there. I let the tomatoes sweat for a few minutes, maybe a couple of minutes. And as the tomatoes sweat, we get to watch it. I don't do anything. I just give it a nice whirl. I just give it a nice stir. And then I continue thinking, what else can I do in terms of to Corona or not to Corona? And I asked my wife, you know, hey, honey, what do you think that I can do to Corona? I said, maybe I can go get a few bottles of this Corona and start drinking it. And he said, na, 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 mat Corona. Before cooking, of course, as usual, wash your hands with soap and hot water. And federal recommendations, they said, do it for 20 seconds. So how do you get 20 seconds to wash? Very simple. You take a little soap in your hand and you go. That is 20 seconds for you, my friends. I, of course, did wash my hands before I started cooking. I am just showing you once again how to spend 20 seconds. So if there is a piece of music that you like to hum, a piece of music that you like to sing, do something. Bring music and cooking together. In that manner, you realize that cooking is an art, baking is a science, I am an artist. So as we keep going through this, you will notice that the tomatoes have started sweating. We are kind of getting a little nice consistency here. And this is where we start doing the wonderful thing. I start first with my turmeric. I put my turmeric in there and I give it a whirl. Once again, I will show you all the things that I'm doing. And as we go through the process, you will notice what else is coming together. I always keep some water handy. As this starts sweating, you want to give it a little bit of water so that it doesn't burn at the bottom. Remember, you're using a stainless steel container to cook. Not a lot, just enough to keep this going. So if you notice, look over here. See how this is starting to get a beautiful color? This is the color you're looking for when you're cooking this. You want to really sweat the tomatoes out and maybe even mash them so that the tomatoes don't come into your cooking consistency. If you want to do it even better, cook the tomatoes first and then when you blend the spinach, you can actually blend the cooked tomato and spinach together and get a consistency. That is what they do in the restaurant. They actually cook the spinach and the tomato together. So as we go through this, we are, we are good over here. See, this is really, really come together. What happens next? We just go through all the spices. Once again, I will tell you the different spices that I'm using. Ganajira powder, which is the blend of coriander and cumin. I put that in. Kashmiri mirchi and lal mirchi. Kashmiri mirchi is for color. The lal mirchi is the spice. So I'm getting that in there. And I'm going to give it another kind of a whirl so that this all goes together. Notice I have not yet put the salt. Why? Because I'm waiting for the spinach to go in also before I put the salt. What else do I need? I need my garam masala powder. About half to one teaspoon. What I'm making here is for two to four people. And this dish really, really goes well with just plain good old white basmati rice. It goes well with chapati. It goes well with any kind of, uh, it is great just by itself too. If you're looking at counting calories, this is an awesome dish to have. If you notice, I have not put anything in there. No butter, no, none, of, none of the highly saturated fat items. I'm just going very simple. It has come to this consistency. It has come where it is. I will now go ahead and add my salt. 
Now the thing with salt is I don't plop it in one place. I kind of move it around into my container so that it mixes well. Same thing with the spices also. I like to do that. And then I come right here to my palak. At this point, I turn the flame down. I pour my palak in there. Ooh, it's starting to look great. Take a look at the color consistency that we have for the palak. I add a little water in here. And I mix it out. I get everything, all those little fun little things that are at the bottom. That's where the taste is. That's absolutely where the taste is. Don't let go of the bottom. Don't toss this out into the sink because this is where everything that is fun and tasty stays. I am trying to keep this inside my 30 minutes. I am getting thirsty. So it is still once again. I have to ask my lady, Corona ki na Corona. She still nods her head saying, na Corona. Do remember, this is not a vegan dish. This is a vegetarian dish because the Spinach is already creamed. It is creamed with milk. That's what they use. They use cream to cream the spinach. So this is not a vegan dish. You can make this vegan also, but you have to go the hard way of not using any of this or any cream. So you really, really need to start from scratch. You got to start and cook the spinach and blend the spinach and do all the wonderful things with the spinach. So here we go. And now at this point, as this starts picking up some heat and steam and starts to bubble, I take my cup of, what is this called? It's paneer. And I'm going to drop this in there and let it cook. And we have a wonderful dish over here called Saag Paneer restaurant style. In the restaurant, what they do, they go and they add one more item the heavy whipping cream. If you do want to get that taste, the real, real taste, and want to do this right, you just add two teaspoons of heavy cream over here, and you're good to go. If you choose not to, that is okay too. So in a nutshell, to make palak paneer, I showed you everything that was bought at the store. Total price for making palak paneer for about four people, less than $5. One dollar, one dollar, two dollars. All the spices, of course, available in your kitchen. Other than that, there wasn't anything else. Labor, three dollars. When you go to a fine dining restaurant and sit down to eat palak paneer, you could pay upwards of $26.95 and as little as $14.95. Time, less than 15 minutes. Think about this, folks, as we go through making amazing palak paneer. Normally, I would have done this and I would have tasted it, but since we are in the world of Corona, this is a na Corona. Don't taste your food, don't lick your hands, and don't continue cooking. So please, folks, remember all the right things to do. This is episode number one of how to make palak paneer from the kitchens of Apu's Cafe and from the artistic director of the Music Circle. As the day progresses, the evening is still very young, the sun has just set. I am thinking of also doing something so unique with music that I'm going to do something with my murdangam. That will be episode number two for you all. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Try this at home. If you like, please come to my site and subscribe to my videos. And the website is musiccircle.org. That is where I am putting all of these videos. I am going to go ahead and upload these videos for you all to see. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Namaste.